Hi everybody. So I wanted to do a video today of how I package and ship my stained glass pieces. Um, I'm going to use uh, the example of this Little Mermaid Suncatcher. This was actually, um, uh, somebody won this in our free giveaway we had this past weekend. So I know that for me, when I was getting started, um, you know, packaging stained glass pieces is kind of an art, honestly. Uh, getting it to your customer without it breaking is pretty is pretty important and it's um it definitely I've acquired some techniques that I would like to share with everybody and what works for me and if you guys have you know any ideas or any ways that you do it that you would like to share please share with me I'm always up for new ideas um also please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel you can also follow me on Facebook I have a website as well, ReneeStainGlassWorks.com. Uh, please check it out. I'm working on getting some patterns on that website uh, for beginners um, to download. I do have one on there now that's a free download uh, for a 3D hummingbird if you want to check it out. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, you know, look over your product, make sure you have everything that you need that's going to go in your box and make sure that it's labeled and make sure it looks nice and polished and ready. I'm also going to make sure that I sign the back of it. Everybody should sign their art and I'm going to try and get it up close here so you can see. Yep. Right there. All signed. So this is ready for packaging. And I'm going to go ahead and just use my, uh, I use foam sheets and they work the best. This is a little bit of a thicker foam, uh, which I prefer because it, uh, it holds it in there tightly without bending. So I usually, you know, measure around it, around my piece. And I want to make it small enough to fit in the box. But I like to uh, sandwich my uh, flat pieces in between two pieces of the, uh, of the foam. All measured out and now I'm gonna go cut this piece of foam I have a hot knife I got this hot knife at um, at Harbor Freight specifically for cutting my foam boards I think it was I want to say it was $20 I don't even know if it was that much but anyway you plug it in and you have to um, adjust the temperature I put it on high and I, you have to hold the trigger down in order for the the gun to warm up. So it takes a minute. I'm going to keep this in real time so you can see how long it takes. But once it starts cutting, it goes pretty easy. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just packaging. I mean, it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. Obviously, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> but it, uh, it does not have to be perfect. You'll see it's just starting to cut now. And I'm still having to use a little force. It's not completely warm yet. But it's so much better than using uh, a box cutter to cut the foam sheets with because it just gets everywhere, especially winter and static. And as you know, for those that live in winter areas, cold areas, that uh, the static is crazy. So this really uh, helps to prevent all those little clingy foam particles from sticking all over the place. Okay, so let's measure it up here and see if it works. See if everything fits. Okay. 
of course, the perfectionist I am, I really don't like those creases in there, but that's okay. <laughs> it serves the purpose. So we're going to do this again. I'm going to get that extra piece of uh, foam board that I cut. And we're going to do this again for the top. The nice thing is we have our one piece all measured out, so we can just use that. as our template. Okay, so back over to cut this piece now. Okay, so the second sheet is going to be cut exactly the same way as we did the first one. And I cut and sped this process up a little bit. Okay, so now back at the table, we're just going to put it all together here. And you'll see how I do it. This is the most important part is this. This is really what keeps your pieces safe from breakage. You want to make sure that your foam board that you're using is, is firm. You want a, a thicker, firmer piece so that it, uh, you know, it doesn't bend that good. And this is it. I'm going to tape it up and then we'll move on to the next part. To tape down the back of my chain, I don't like to put the tape directly on top of the chain because it might leave a sticky glue when you remove the tape. So I like to use, um, you know, just a little saran wrap to wrap around it and tape it down. I'll show you how I do it here. And by the way, I'm using my GoPro. Uh, this is the first real video I've uh, I've done with it, and um, hopefully everybody can see everything okay. It uh, there's a couple spots on here I wished I'd had it angled a little bit differently, but for first time I guess it's not too bad. Um, <laughs> what do you guys think? Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully it works out, and you kind of get exactly what I'm saying. So yeah, just, you know, make sure everything is uh, nice and taped up and we're going to come over here and get some more bubble wrap. I like to wrap the, the finished piece here with extra bubble wrap. A little extra padding cannot hurt. Okay, so now we're ready to assemble everything in the box. And really my goal with this is to pack it as tight as possible and make the edges within the box secure. Um, I don't want 
anybody to be able to, you know, if it gets kicked or stepped on or I don't want the sides to get dented at all. That is ultimately my goal is to keep it from doing that and having enough padding around the stained glass piece to prevent that from happening. Another good uh, packing material that I like to use is the uh, the popcorn, the you know, those little pop white popcorn foam pieces. Those work so nice, especially when shipping 3D pieces. So I'm just adding uh, more cushion here, more bubble wrap. Uh, this is where I wish my camera was angled a little bit better. I'm sorry, I will get better at this. But basically, I'm just going to be, you know, packing, packing. And my studio looks like a kitchen and dining room because that's what it was. <laughs> we uh, When we bought the house, we, uh, we fixed it up and uh, had two apartments in here and rented it out. And then we moved over here and... Um, ended up uh, turning this side into my stained glass studio, which I actually really like it like this. But anyway, you can see I'm putting that foam all around it. I want it, I want it packed nice and tight. I don't want any, anybody to be able to, like I said, you know, damage the box in any way. I just, I want it protected. So that's basically, that's it right there. That looks nice and, and, and tight and ready to go. Okay, well, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope that this helps some people out. Um, just a couple things to think about before uh, I end the video is with shipping, it's important to, depending on how you want to run your business, it's, you know, whether you want to offer shipping or you don't want to offer shipping, um, you know, that's really going to depend on how successful you are. Um, and you can be as successful as you want in this business. Um, I do not have any employees. I do this myself and I consider myself pretty successful. Um, I, I, I do pretty good with it, but it's definitely, you know, I've had to learn along the way. I don't have any type of special degree. I've taken some business classes, but no like special degree or anything. And I'm self-taught with all of this. But um, these are things that you learn along the way. And I thought that it would be good to pass along to everybody. Um, and to think about with your shipping. Now, like for me, I don't order my shipping materials in large quantities. So these are things you're gonna to wanna to think about. Um, if you do decide to order in large quantities, you will get a better rate. It will be less expensive for you, but you have to have a place to store that. I don't have the storage facilities, nor am I big enough to order in huge quantities like that. So thinking about where, you're, where you are going to wanna to get your supplies is important. Um, I do try to recycle as much as possible. I don't like to hoard boxes, so I'm pretty selective at what I save. Um, when I do need boxes, uh, Walmart is a really good place um, that offers uh, not so much the boxes like these. I get these at um, uh, Staples, but they're pretty expensive. So, you know, it's good to become a member and do your whole, you know, tax exempt and stuff like that. Um, but the Walmart ones are less expensive and they have the square boxes and you can ship those. It will be a little bit more expensive. Um, I do like to keep my shipping rates down so my customers don't have to pay so much because shipping is expensive. So you're definitely going to want to work in shipping uh, into your business model and see how it's going to work out for you. Um, I do, my customers do pay for their own shipping. Unfortunately, I cannot afford to pay for shipping. It is expensive, but it's also important to, if you want to be successful, to offer your products to people, at least all over the country. That's what I do. Um, but yeah, just a couple things to think about. And if anybody has any other, you know, suggestions or tips and tricks and anything like that I'm totally up for listening because like I said I'm self-taught this is just what has worked for me um 
but I'm always up for new ideas. And um, again, I really appreciate everybody watching and I hope that this video helps some people out. Have a great day.